Hello, my name is Honor Delorme, and I'm the main software architect of the EGLAB software for processing EEG data. This is part, part 7 of EEG preprocessing, where we're going to remove bad data segments. So we just uh, uh, identified and reject bad channels, so now it's time to reject large artifacts. And there's two menus uh, we've seen before to access the raw data and reject raw data. One is uh, plot channel data and one is reject continuous data by I. They're actually equivalent, so you can call either. And when you check, when you select this one, it also gives you instruction uh, what to do, mark stretches as continuous data, and you can also uh, click on uh, mark to, to, uh, to remove your rejections. So for instance, let's look at some data. So here we have a continuous portion of data and we want to remove that portion right there. So we are going to press our mouse right here and um, drag our mouse, click and drag our mouse, and this is going to select that region for uh, rejection. And we can scroll the data, and once we're done selecting such region, we can press the reject button. Uh, this is, uh, there's different types of artifact you might want to remove. Uh, usually you want to reject large muscle artifacts or otherwise strange events like these ones which contaminate most of the channels so we would select these events but stereotype artifact like Blake's for instance this can be taken care of by ICA independent component analysis so we don't necessarily want to remove these they can be taken care of at a later stage of, uh, of uh, pre-processing. So we can keep them and then ICA will take care of these. So we don't have to remove them at that stage. But these other events we want to remove right now because ICA will likely not be able to deal with these contaminates all the data channels. There is another method to do fast artifact rejection. It's to, uh, we have two buttons here, stack and norm. So stack uh, is going to stack all the electrodes and norm is going to normalize the activity of each single channel. So if you press these two buttons, you end up with this view where all the channels are in the center. And then you can also change the time range to display and you can use a window length of 30 seconds, for instance, instead of the short five second. And then you get this kind of uh, view where you can see uh, some region, for instance, this, these are likely blinks, so you might want to remove these, but these are pretty large artifacts, so you can see them at once and just decide to remove them. It's not optimal because you don't see all the channels, but it's a quick way to go through your data. There's also automated method to remove artifact, like the automatic continuous rejection. This method is going to scan the data, use, uh, use windows of four seconds, and then detect in these windows if there is some, for instance, high frequency. So for instance, here you put a frequency range, you put a threshold, and if it uh, goes above that threshold in that window, then it selects that window and rejects it. And it increase, here we said, increases your, by the window by 0 0.20, half a second, and you can also add at the beginning and the end of each window some, some um, additional uh, regions so you're sure you don't have the artifacts. So that's one method. It works for low frequency and high frequency. It's a very simple method. There's also more advanced method like uh, clean continuous data using ASR. So that's the same uh, extension I mentioned before. The one that can reject bad channels. This one can also reject bad portion of data. And this is more uh, of a, a more complex method that uses principal component analysis. And there's other plugins available in the extension manager, of course. So this is the live demo. So I will start a lab. And I'm going to load a different data set this time because the one that's in the, the sample data folder is too clean and this data set is actually available in the description of uh, this video video there is a link to it so it's called simple oddball 
it's also a EG Lab data set that was saved just after importing. So here I'm going to select it. And um, this is how it looks like. So as I mentioned before, this is the fact we can't see all the traces. This is due to a DC shift. So we can remove that using remove DC offset. So now this is how it looks like. And in this artifact, we have strong discontinuity, for instance, here. And um, we also have, uh, so these are probably eye movements. We also have strong muscle activation that uh, we can see here and here, series of muscle uh, activation. As mentioned before, it's easier uh, if we look at longer window, for instance, 30 seconds of data. And we can select regions like this. And we can also go backward like this. And if we want to join regions on different pages, we would go uh, like this. So this would be a single region. And this allows you to merge region, which are on different pages. Then if you want to reject that data, you would press uh, reject, not going to reject here, uh, that data. So here in this example, I would probably want to reject this portion and then this portion of data as well, where we have strong muscle artifact. Um, I'm going to illustrate how to do that using the automated methods. First, very simple method. This one, which is we specify the channel range, you specify the frequency, and for instance, a threshold. So here we want to remove portions of data with high frequency, four second windows, and 0 0.5 second uh, increments. So we just press OK. And this selects automatically a very long window. So here, this is the same data we were looking at before. And um, I'm just going to select a, a shorter window. So for instance, 10 seconds. And we move the DC offset. And we can see, so it selected these portions with the muscle artifact. It's also selected this portion right there, but it failed to select the this portion here because there was not much high frequency uh, um, activity. And then we have this other method, which I mentioned, ASR. So I'm going to illustrate it as well here. So um, clean continuous data using ASR. And I'm just going to leave the default. I'm not going to plot the results. I'm just going to show it to you. And uh, so there's different steps. First, it scans for uh, bad channels or channels with uh, high frequency noise. So uh, that's what it's doing here. It's a method that takes a little bit uh, longer because it's more compute intensive. So after it scanned for uh, bad electrodes, it found two. Uh, it's looking for bad uh, data regions. And uh, here it says it's cleaning in 31 blocks. So, um, We'll wait until this is done. And now it's done created data set number two, which we're going to visualize. So this is now how the data looks like. So you won't be able to see the artifact anymore. We can use the same type of long window, uh, like 10 seconds, which is the one we were looking at before. We can see lots of the channels vary uh, together. So in that case, we would benefit from computing average reference. This is just the raw data. Usually we would have all the pre-processing steps before, which have been detailed in all the lectures. So it's just a quick view of what the data can do. And so some of the regions with the muscle have been removed. So here you see that ASR introduced a boundary, which means that it cut some data out, which was bad. And overall, it looks it looks um, it looks pretty good. 
So this is the end of the pre-processing pipeline. There is one step we haven't talked about, and that's the step of running independent component analysis and rejecting uh, components. But this will be the object of uh, uh, another series of lecture. So the, the pre-processing, we're done with this uh, section of uh, pre-processing. So it's being continued in the next series, which is about running ICA where we'll talk about the theory and the uh, how to recognize your components, how to remove your components. I also want to spend a few seconds to thank all the people who have made these videos and the EGLab project in general possible. First, Scott Mackeck, the co-creator of EGLab, then Julie Anton and Marissa Westerfield, with, who helped design this series of presentations over the years as we presented them at EGLab workshops. NIH, of course, who has supported the EGI project over the years. And finally, all the researchers who have contributed to this project. And I apologize in advance if I forgot someone. Thank you again for watching.